Welcome everybody, this is Jeff from Cold Grove Motorsports. Today's video is going to cover the installation of the GPS module onto a Micron 4 logger. Install is very quick and easy, and we're going to walk you through it step by step. First step is to take your logger um, and get access to the back panel. Now the GPS module comes packaged with both the GPS receiver, which is terminated in a 712 connector, and a two-port data hub, which has the uh, 712 connector, and it also comes with this handy power lead. You'll use these to clip onto your battery, and if you do use these, it will use your onboard battery on your cart instead of draining the 9-volt battery um, for the system power. So the first step here is to find a suitable place to install the two-port data hub. I like to put it right on the underside of my front cowling. You'll see there's a bolt that you can use to, uh, a bolt hole that you can use to just pass a bolt through and mount it. Um, like I said, I tuck mine right up under the very front of the housing so I can get in there and get access to this uh, with my data key so that I can download my data very easily. Once you've got that mounted, the um, two port data hub is going to connect to the logger using the 712 connector. Just gently press the connector in, screw the bezel tight. If you decide to use your cart's onboard battery as power, clip these up. You can then connect your cart's wiring harness onto these as well. So get that set up, get this mounted, get it tucked out of the way. And then what we're going to do is come in and connect our GPS antenna. So this will go right into port number three. Gently press it in and screw the collar tight. Once you've got that situated, go ahead and mount your GPS unit, some, unit somewhere on the uh, top side of the cart. Most people will throw this thing right on their front fairing. Um, you can use some of the nice 3M Velcro like we've got here to keep it stuck down. A lot of people pass a zip tie over it too, just to be sure. So let's go ahead and get the logger fired up so that we can go in and do our configuration for the GPS unit. We'll double check that everything's connected okay and that we're picking up satellites by hitting the on button, bottom right, twice. We see the GPS data screen pops up. The number of satellites we're picking up is on the left hand side. We're getting 10, that's good. Our speed is on the right. If you had your cart up on a uh, stand in the paddock, you'd be able to push it across the paddock and see that speed change. Okay, so let's go ahead and go in there and set the start finish line. We'll do that by hitting the OK button to enter the settings. At the bottom here, you'll see it says press OK to set beacon. Um, what I recommend doing, you know, in between sessions, take your cart on the stand, push it right over to the start finish line, and press the OK button to set the start finish line. I like to do it right in the center of the track so that... Um, you know, if you take in a different line down the front straight, you're going to have the uh, beacon capture either way. You're going to hit OK to do that. Once you do that, you are OK to start just going out and making laps. Um, after you make your first lap, the GPS module will have fully detected the track and you'll be getting trips every time you cross the start finish beacon uh, for each lap. The next thing that we're going to do is go into the menu and set up splits. This is kind of an advanced feature, but it can be one that can give you some real valuable information while you're out on track. We're going to enter the control panel by hitting OK. If you need to set up a new track, go ahead and do that first, um, and then hit enter on the lap split setup to enter the lap split setup. You see the top line here is total GPS splits. Right now I've got three set for this track. If you scroll down, you can enter the split mode, which gives you your actual split time, which I don't find terribly helpful. Um, what I like best is the plus or minus to your best time. Um, that's going to give you the difference for the lap. Um, so at this point, you can go ahead and back out by hitting exit, back out again by hitting exit, and exit one more time. Now we're going to re-enter that GPS setup menu that we accessed by hitting the on button twice. So we're going to hit OK to get back into the settings. We'll hit OK. 
We're going to press OK to set our beacon. So now we'll pretend that we've either wheeled our cart on its stand over to split number one or we're driving a real slow lap being careful. Once we arrive at where we want to place our split one on the track, we hit OK. And same thing, we're going to proceed over to where we want our split two to be on the track and we're going to hit OK. Now at this point, we're all set. We've got three different sectors or split set up. So each time we cross a new split, we're going to get a plus minus differential for our time through that split. So if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be posting videos just like this one covering both hardware installation and analysis inside AIM Race Studio 2. Also, don't forget to give us a like on Facebook. And if you're in the market for any AIM Racing products, data loggers, sensors, patch cables, GPS unit, Micron expansion, whatever it is, go over to our website, coldgrovemotorsports.com, and shop our online store there. We're an AIM Racing dealer and carry their full line of products. If there's something that you need that you don't see on our website, just shoot me an email.